our service where we take communion. Uh, this is where we break the body of Jesus as we take the bread, remembering that our sin broke Him on the cross. And this is where we drink the grape juice that represents His blood. And we recognize the blood that was spilled for us so that we could be here today. Uh, communion is a time for reflection. It's a time to examine ourselves. The Bible actually says if we don't examine ourselves, then we drink judgment and we fall asleep in the church. In 1 Corinthians 11. And, and yet, it's a time to also recognize the extent and the magnitude of the forgiveness that we ourselves have received from God. And so when we leave communion, this is something that we do, the Bible says, like, as one man, as one church. In one moment, at this very time, right now, God ordains that we should take communion properly and thus be, have completely clean hearts all together so that we can worship Him appropriately. So I ask of you to take communion appropriately. Some say, well, my heart's not right, so I will not take communion. I say if you're standing before Jesus, you would get your heart right like that. And so I'm going to ask you to imagine that you are standing before Jesus. Because he is present in this room with us right here. And that you decide to let go of anything and everything that is not God in this moment. You're going to notice a difference after this point in the service. The energy level while you think it's high. It's going to go through the roof. Come on, bro. Come on. When you recognize the forgiveness you have received and the gratitude wells up in you, that's the driving force for everything as a disciple of Jesus. Be turning your Bibles to Matthew, chapter 26. God says, be still and know I am the Lord. Yeah, we just don't like to be still. Like, I always have to be doing something. It's my nature. Yeah. Yeah. You're all giggling at me, those of you who know me. I just I have to do something all the time. Two in the morning, one in the morning. Okay. And yet, the Lord says, when I stand before the Lord, I'm going to be very still. Guaranteed. In Matthew 26, in verse 62, Jesus shows us an example of not only being still, but being silent when we need to be silent. Yeah. It says in verse 62, the high priest said to him, I charge you an oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Of course, there was many accusations. He was being attacked, lied about. You know, I've noticed a lot of people don't like it when people talk about it. And we have all kinds of reactions to that. Come on, Ron. And yet the only proper reaction is what Jesus does right. Right. Says, but Jesus remained silent. Hold there and go to Mark 3, verse 4. There's another instance of being silent. Mark 3, verse 4. Then Jesus asked the Pharisees. See, it's flipped right here. In the first verse, the Pharisees were asking Jesus in questions, accusing, attacking. And yet Jesus right here is asking the Pharisees a question. And he says, then Jesus asked them, which is lawful on the Sabbath? To do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they were in silent. You know, it's interesting. This one's a totally different silence. You know what I'm talking about? Have you ever had that kind of silence? Where somebody's talking about you, or somebody has said something that shows that what you're doing is wrong, or, and, you, and you remain silent in a different way. See, here's our issue as people. Of course, I'm the pot calling the kettle black when I share these things. We all have this. The first issue is that we don't remain silent when we need to, and we create our own experience in life when we're supposed to be silent and we don't remain silent. But then we're usually pointing the finger in that time when we don't remain silent. I've been there. But then there's the time when we don't like what's happening 
We don't like what was just said to us, so then we remain silent. And we're just stupid. See, Jesus displayed his trust in God. Jesus displayed his closeness to God. See, the book of James says that we're to keep a tight rein on our tongue. That if anyone's wise and understanding, if we really as wise as we think we are, we'll show it with our life and our good deeds. All right, come on, Ron. See, that's what Jesus did before the Bible. That's what Jesus did when he was crushed. He was showing everyone how close he was to God. Because when you're close to God, you don't need to protect yourself. Come on. Because God is protecting Come you. Come on, man. God is guarding you. And God can be defended. Without moving a finger, or most importantly, without moving a tongue. Come on, man. I'm going to let my wife share with I think when I think about the cross, what it means to me is trust. Um... It's interesting that we are talking about uh, the silence. Um, being raised, my name is Tracy Hardy. Those of you who don't know me, I have friends that are here. Uh, I was raised in a single, mo single mother's home. Uh, I was also raped and abused. And so I think from that, uh, I've uh, kind of not quite. You know, um, yes, I stood inside of me. Uh, but I think now as I am a disciple, I have learned a lot of looking at Jesus and following his example on the cross and trying to see, wow, okay, how, how was he abused? Because he was abused. That's right. Uh, that he can relate to me. Yeah. And on, to see the times where he was silent. Yeah. And trying to learn how to be silent. Uh, in my marriage, I have a lot to say. And, <laughs> and to learn how to tame my time. Come on, Tracy. To be silent, knowing that he's not trying to hurt me. And even thinking about Jesus, he knew deep down they weren't trying to hurt him because he trusted his God. Yeah. And he was doing it for them. Yeah. And so for me, I go, okay, God. I really got to continue to learn to, when there's the right time and place, I got to be quiet Amen. and stop having something to say. Because it's saying that I don't trust my husband. Come on, Tracy. So I'm learning to trust, first of all, God, the way Jesus trusted God, and remain silent when I know, when I need to be silent, that he's not trying to hurt me, you know? And it's great because when you look at the cross, everything that Jesus said, he said, I did it to fulfill the scriptures. And for me in my life, I go, everything he's doing in my marriage, for my children, uh, that he's doing it to fulfill the plan he has for me. Come on. But I gotta trust him. I gotta remember the cross. And I gotta be silent when I'm not. So we protect ourselves. Yeah. Come on, Ron. See, we think in those moments when we need to be led that we need to understand. Yeah. Mm. And stop and question, which is refusing to be led. God thinks we need to be silent. Woo. And so today, as you take the bread, please don't just take a piece and eat it. Please take a piece and break it. Woo. And recognize that that's what each of one of us have done to Jesus. As the grape juice goes down your throat, realize that blood is what cleanses us from our sins. If we have faith that that's what it does. Yeah. Come on, come on. Yeah. And today, let's remain silent when we need to remain silent. As a preacher, I know about speaking a lot and talking a lot. And yet, since I've come back to L.A., I've had to learn I need to be silent. I, I am a disciple who is a learner at all times. Yeah, come on, Ron. And, uh, I appreciate our leadership with Tim and Lee Dan. Come on. And, uh, <laughs> you can be an old 
love God, and if you're silent, you can learn a lot of it. With that, let's take communion in an appropriate way and honor God. Let's pray. Father, thank you so very much that you sent your son to die for us. I was so moved by what my wife shared. It didn't really occur to me how abused Jesus is. How he allowed himself to be abused so that we would stand firm and righteous and loving in the face of abuse. Now. Father, if we remain silent with our armor on, the abuse can do nothing. It cannot harm us. Thank you for providing the divine protection that we can have at our disposal at any time. If we feel hurt, I pray we will take ownership that we've not put that armor on and that's the only way we can. And yet, for, forgive us every sin. Help every soul sitting in this room to get fully, completely in touch with how much forgiveness you have afforded them and fire them up about it. Help us to feel so fired up that we tell literally the entire world about you and your son. We thank you. We love you. It is in the name of Jesus that we pray all these things. Amen. Amen.